The series opens with bloody skin looking Kenny in the wood trying to cut down a tree. We then see Ethan, Boyd, Christy, and Jim inside. Jim and the others can hear voices outside asking if everyone is okay inside. Jim tries to open the door, but he is put into a headlock by Boyd, as he tells him that the people outside are not there to help him. We then see Kenny and the others rushing to get back to the house for safety. Jade drops and hit his head on a rock, but is helped up by Father Katri and Ellis. As they get closer to the house someone from inside peeps through the window and shouts that they have runners on the hill. They organize their guns to secure the doors. Fatima sees this and shouted that they should let them in. The guard is sure that the people outside are not theirs. As they knock on the door continuously, Julie sees a guy that she recognizes. He asks her if she doesn't recognize him. Julie is shocked and Kenny shoots the guy with a gun, the bullet seemed to not have hurt the guy, and he just smiles. Donna lets them into the house before they are killed. Donna tells them to get on the floor and asks Ellis to tie them up. Ellis eventually ties them up after arguing. At the RV Jim asks Boyd what he means by the people outside are not human. Boyd explains that the things outside will get into your head and get you to do stuff for them. Ethan then wakes up in pain. Christy injects him with substances to keep him pain free and calm. We then see Ellis tying Jade upon a bed. A girl enters while Ellis is tying Jade. She sees the watch and tells Ellis that it's nice and the guy is handsome. Ellis leave the girl in the room with Jade, telling her to not take anything and just look after him. Donna enters the room and unties Tabitha. Tabitha tries to escape, but a guy holding a gun outside stops her. She is then put to sit back into the seat as Donna had a conversation with her. We then see a guy named Victor talking to Julie. He went to grab a can of food near Julie and tell her he has never seen two vehicles come to the area at the same time before. They are interrupted by Fatima who tells Victor that he should leave. She told Victor that he is scaring the little girl. Fatima tells Julie that she is going to be the one looking after her for her time here. She unties Julie and tells her to not do anything stupid to which she agrees. Fatima takes Julie to her room where a bunch of artwork that Ellis drew. She tells Julie that she should let Ellis draw her, but she was not so happy with the bold statement. They both gaze out the window looking at the moonlight. Back at the RV, Jim can hear voices outside telling him that they really should have let him in to help. Christy gets nervous as she thinks that the rock would drop and they would get inside, but Boyd pulls her aside and calm her down. He tells Christy to just focus on Ethan and nothing else. We then see Ellis entering a room with Kenny and Father Catry. Ellis tells both of them that there's a room ready for them to stay in when they are tired and drops a drink off to them to help get the edge off. We then see Bing Kian Liu and his nurse playing a game of chess. Out of nowhere he gets extremely sad saying that he wants his son now. The nurse takes him away. At the RV, Christy removes the piece of metal that was stuck inside Ethan's leg as he cries for help. At the hospital, we see the dead patient that Sarah killed. Sarah is in a corner nodding like a crazy person. She is told by an invisible person she needs to cut out the patient that she killed Tung. She agrees to do it without hesitating. We see Kenny and Father Catry speaking. Father Catry tells Kenny that in the morning they are going to look for Boyd, Christy, Jim, and Ethan. He disagrees that he won't be going because of what happened to the last Megan and her family. We then see Ellis entering a room that Julie is in. He does not see her and gets undressed. Upon recognizing her he gets dressed quickly. Julie tells Ellis that she likes his drawing to which he said thank you. Donna tells Tabitha a story about her and her sister. They said that they weren't as lucky to arrive in the morning as Tabitha to get help. They arrive at night. They saw the tree in the road and had to turn back. Donna said that there was someone in the road blocking them from moving on, so her sister got out with a gun and approached them. Donna said she saw her sister's face ripped off and murdered in front of her. She saw another one approaching her that's when she ran and hide in bushes in the forest. She said she can hear her sister crying as they torture her to death. We then we father Catry taking a drunk Kenny to his room. Kenny stops on the stairs and starts having a conversation with father Catry. They are interrupted by a guy who wants to go downstairs. As father Catry moves for the guy to pass and looks back to Kenny, he sees that Kenny has already fallen asleep. We later see Sarah having a shower. Her brother then knocks on the door to ask her if everything is okay. Sarah opens the door crying asking if he can help her. Her brother sees her dirty clothes on the ground in blood. As Bing Kian Liu's nurse went to get his food dot she finds the patient that Sarah killed. Now shocked she drops the food and as she exits she sees two people looking at her smiling. She runs to a room and locks the doors. We then see Jim holding the rock in his hand. Christy sees this and tells Jim no. Suddenly a monster breaks through the door and catches Ethan. Christy wakes up and realizes that she was just dreaming. Boyd calms her down and tells her that the sun is up, it's morning and they are okay. We later see both sides of the family Tabitha, Jim, and their children reunited. We then see Sarah talking to her brother. Her brother asked what if she done, and she told him that she left the door open. 
Kenny and the rest arrive at where his father is kept. Upon arriving he finds the door open. He later finds his father badly eaten. He hugs his father's half-eaten body and cries. We then see Boyd arriving at the post office. He erases a board saying nights without incident 96 before entering. While in his office he holds his head in his hand disappointed. We then see Julie and Ethan playing a game. Julie asks Ethan what he is looking at. Ethan says nothing but actually, he is looking at a boy in all white. As Ethan smiles the boy tells him to shush. 